Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to show you how you can work with symmetry in Mari for your characters. This is a trick we picked up over the years, and it's it's pretty it's, it's really rather handy. So Mari doesn't really have symmetry by default. It has some some pretty bootleg screen-based symmetry, which isn't really super useful. So we're going to be showing you here how to actually work with the, the truest form of symmetry we've found to work with this. So this is all based on UVs. So in order to work with, show you the setup there, let's jump into Maya. So this is the, the setup we have for our UVs. We, we're working with UDIMs here, and if you aren't sure what UDIMs are, you can check out our, uh, our video on that topic. We also recommend that you check out our introduction to Mari as well, which we published uh, last week. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. So um, that, should make, that should put you up to scratch on everything Mari. So essentially what we have here is we have our character mapped out here. This is the left side, and this is the right side. This has just been duplicated one row up here. This is um, this is quite handy because now essentially what we're doing is we're just painting on the UVs here, on this one, and then we just copy the textures over here. So we can select all of these guys here and just copy them in one go. So we don't have real symmetry, <laughs> but we have an approximation of symmetry. It's it's technically going to be pretty much the same. Yeah, it's not like real time symmetry. You're not painting on this on no. both sides at the same time. No, that's there is no intuitive way of doing that in Mari. So. Uh, I'll, we'll just show you real quick how to do how to do the setup here. We're not showing how to distribute the UDIMs based on uh, based on scale like this. We'll do that in a separate video. Uh, but so here we can just select all of these guys here. Yeah, sure. So we'll just we'll just recreate it for you, just so like you know how to do it from scratch, basically. Yeah. So we delete this, and so now we have the left side here. The left side is done and is mapped here. And as this model here is perfectly symmetrical. We just want to uh, right shift, right mouse button, and do the mirror feature. This is a new feature in, I believe, Maya 2018, and it's super handy. So now we um, we can go to the front view, and now we can just select the UV and the UV shells, and just select all the ones from here. And uh, we can convert this here to UVs. And now, if we go to the, the move tool, hit the W key. You can see over here we have transform settings here. By default, this here is set to 0 0.1, and we change this here to 1. What this here means is that you now hit, hit these buttons here. This is now going to move up one UDIM. If it's set to 0.1, it's going to move you 0.1 up. So just by doing this, you can also use the arrow keys for this, which is really quite handy. You can just move this up, up and down the arrow keys. This is how I normally do it. Mm. And um, you can just move the entire chunk 10 UDIMs up. Yeah, they changed this for, I think it was Maya 2018, yeah. uh, where now you actually have control of it. It used to be just default was one. Yeah. So it's nice that you have finer control. It's really Maya, quite useful. Yeah. Uh, in general, the UV tools in Maya are actually really good. They, mm. um, they've they improved them significantly over the last years, mostly just by buying Unfold 3D <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and just integrating those. But they're properly integrated. The, the UV tools have been uh, got a significant boost over the last years, yeah. which is very much welcome. So once this is done here, uh, we can just s simply export a mesh out, but we just briefly just want to talk about the layout here because now technically this here has been mirrored. This here is um, if you were to have like any logos or anything here. Let's say this was uh, this was a, a monster with tons of logos, tons of endorsements on him, or text or something like that. <laughs> this would they would now technically be mirrored on this side here. So the way you would do that, you would flip the UVs here, just flip them horizontally here. But I don't like to do that because I think the advantage of having instant symmetry as Mari is worth the slight hassle of having to repaint my logos or whatever yeah. it is. Like, and you won't run into any issues with, say, like displacement maps or anything. No. This is something we actually tested quite a lot just to make sure that this workflow would actually, yeah. actually work. And um, you should be good. <laughs> yeah, you should be good. There aren't, from a technical point of view, this yeah. this doesn't have any issues whatsoever. This is the this is the way I prefer to do this uh, when doing personal projects, when working on on production work, whatever mm. it is. This is this is the way I prefer. Yeah, to Yeah, like do if it. you viewed this now with like the whole blue red thing, mm. you would see the top part there would be completely red. Yeah. Because technically it's flipped, uh, because it is. Yeah. But this just speeds up our our symmetry workflow a lot. 
So, yeah. so you can see this now. This has now been flipped here, but it's fine. It's a, there's actually nothing wrong with it. No, it's just it's different. just it's just it's a warning. It's not an error message. <laughs> but we, so with this said, you can now just export this guy out. Just export them as an Alembic, an FBX, uh, or an OBJ. We're just using OBJ here, and um, we're not going to talk show that because that's fairly standard <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Saving some time here, being efficient. So we have this guy in Mara now, and um, exact same model. Just flipped over. You can see the UVs now here. Same thing. So what this allows us to do now, the basic version here is it allows us to paint something here. Let's just use, uh, uh, get a color for this. And allows us just to paint something here now. So um, you can now just select this item, Control C to copy, select the next one and Control V to paste. So if you now look into our ortho view, you can now see that we've now successfully just painted here. So this is this is a way of doing it. You're just painting something here. Beautiful little red. <laughs> and uh, control C and control B. And now it's, it's perfectly done. So um, this works if we do something like super nice texture here as well. That is that is super nice. Yeah, thanks. Professional texture artist right there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, control E, control V. Works perfectly fine. So you can now just paint your entire dude here. But the problem is, we'll, we'll, you'll see that we're painting across multiple UDIMs. So if you have uh, 130 UDIMs or 60, whatever, if you have a big number of UDIMs, this is not feasible. Like you're not gonna, you're simply not gonna select these by hand. You're not gonna go here and go Control C, Control V. Because that's just too, too many UDIMs. Too many UDIMs, and you're gonna screw it up as well. You're gonna go like, uh, if you have that many UDIMs, this tiny region here, like this region here, will be one UDIM. So you're not even gonna find them. So Mari has a tool which allows you to copy multiple UDIMs at once. So with our super nice texture here, we can hit the five key. The five key just brings it to the front view, and now we can select half the model. Essentially, what we want to copy from. And um, then we go to patches, we do copy textures. And here you have, uh, here we have a little interface here. It's source object, source layer. By default, it's gonna copy from on, on the same layer to the same layer. So you can change this here, which layer you're copying from and to. Yes, yeah, so you could have like a symmetry other, or other side layer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's, that's pretty handy as well. So you see target layer, source layer. And so really, really nice here. Uh, as a note here as well, this works on the layers. This is not like per channel or mm. anything. This is this is per layer. So uh, yeah, don't it's like one one channel, one la the one layer within the one channel. Yes, exactly. So here you see the source range. This is the selected range. You can also just specify this as well. Uh, for some characters, you just know this is from 2001 to 2010 or 1030 or whatnot. Um, and then you have your demo or you, sorry your your object. And then you have the offset. We know this is 10 because we offset everything by 10. Pretty simple. Hit OK, and boom, instant. And now you're wondering, how the hell did this go so fast? Like, this is not, this is way faster than copy-pasting, because if you copy-paste, this goes into the buffer, and you gotta copy, and you gotta paste. So what's happening here when you are projecting here, as far as I know, uh, this this goes into, this is cached now, this is all baked down, and this is stored in, in a file. So now it's simply just moving the texture. It's not doing anything fancy. Doing the only thing it's doing is it's taking the um, the cached the cached version here, the baked version of texture, and just moving it up here. It's just copying the texture. So this is an incredibly useful way of painting here. So again, you're just painting this kind of stuff here. Hit the B key if you set auto bake uh, if you set the bake behavior to that, uh, and then you just go to five to this patches copy textures and I said okay. So this is a bit, uh, it's a bit annoying having to go up here all the time. So I've actually mapped this to control K. So now we can just do the same thing here. Just paint, hit control K and hit okay. So this becomes quite fast after a while. Hmm. The way we set up keys here is by going to edit shortcuts. And here you can just under search at actions, you just search for what, what you want. So you, here it's copy textures. So you find this under here now. And now you just double click on the shortcut and now you just set the key you want. So control K, all done, hit OK, and um, and that's it. This, it's a very simple workflow once you get used to this. 
Um, this means though that in order for this to work, you do have to have perfect a perfectly symmetrical model, and your UVs will also be perfectly symmetrical. So now, what let's say one of the sides here is slightly is slightly distorted, like the model. The topology is symmetrical, but you have some shape stuff here. I still highly recommend that you keep your UVs symmetrical here. Mm. It's a really good idea because otherwise you otherwise you you're messing up symmetry in Mari. Yeah, you could always just repaint that one area. Exactly. So uh, definitely definitely keep your UVs as symmetrical as you can. <laughs> it's just gonna it's just gonna save you all kinds of issues. I mean that's that's really how we work in production. It's unless you have something crazy asymmetrical mm. most of the time what we'll do is we'll just create a blend shape yeah because it'll be symmetrical either way we'll create a blend shape and then make it asymmetrical there but we're still keeping the uvs the same so we'll copy it over but then we'll just paint something bespoke for that area yeah like it's some if you go where you have three arms on one side and four on the other okay then you can't preserve yeah. it anymore um but Obviously. that's in those extreme cases in most cases everything is symmetrical yeah that's true so, so it's also also one thing here is, which is an interesting thing, is how much do you offset this by? Here is offset by ten. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you offset by ten or hundred. By having a bigger offset can be advantageous. Let's say we're adding bunch of stuff to this here. So now we have four units we can add stuff here to. Let's say you need to add uh, six units or ten units to him, like he, like he gets a mega long tail or something <laughs> like that. Like he gets wings or something now which might be a design thing. So let's say you're adding wings to this and that's 10 UDIMs now. You can't really put them here. So design change happened, you can put four of them here, but where do you put the rest? Now you have to put them up here and now you have to put the right side all the way up here. So what you can do to counteract that, just to, to work a bit ahead of that, you can just move this up, something like this. You can move it up by five or a hundred yeah. or so, I mean, that's not actually a bad idea. Actually, just offsetting it by 100. That's what we did. We worked on a big project where everything that was on the left side was the first 100 UDIMs. Yeah. We didn't use the first 100. No. Uh, or like 10 by 10, yeah, I guess 100. Yeah. Um, but we allowed that space to be there. So whenever we send it over to the texture artist, they just knew we need an offset of 100. Yeah, exactly. Not to be confused with moving it in, in Maya, which is just an offset of one. Yeah. That's just, that's just moving it up one UDIM, but you're moving it up 10 in the UDIM range. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify that. So so this means that let's say we're adding a bunch of shit to this guy mm -hmm. here. Like we can add essentially as much as we want to here. So let's say now we're only using this range here from 1010 to like 40. And um, that's not a problem. We still have 60 empty. Yeah. But that's fine. Honestly, this is not a problem. We're Mario not really will... concerned about empty UVs. No. Like empty UDIMs. So... No, you'll be fine. Mario will read this perfectly well. Same with same with Maya as well. Once you bring this into Maya again to uh, to render this, it only cares about the coordinate. Yeah, I mean sometimes you'll you'll run into maybe you'll run into render issues with certain render engines where yeah. if you have blank UDIMs, yeah. it, it'll be weird. But yeah. all those usually just fill with solid black or something. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So w with all this said, I uh, really hope this has been useful mm. and uh, for sure. <laughs> and that you now learn how to how to use. Um, how to just work with the uh, UDIMs for symmetry in Mari. This this tip here has really sa sped up my work significantly. I used to spend like legit hours making symmetrizing my models here uh, or symmetrizing my textures just because it just takes a lot of time and you're gonna screw yeah. it up all the time as well. So this this here has really saved my ass yeah. so much time. So thank you so much for watching. Yeah, and we, we recently started uploading some more Mari content. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to continue doing that in the future. Yeah. So if you want to see more of that, make sure to check back, mm -hmm. like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank you.